Hi, welcome to another Unity 3D tutorial. This tutorial was requested by Roy on Patreon and he would like to know how to set up the Xbox controllers so that they work with Unity. The first step is to set up the drivers for the controller that you're using. Type in game controllers into the search and then select set up USB game controller. Ensure that you have the controller plugged into your machine. Locate the controller and press Properties. As you press the buttons and move the joysticks of the controller, you will see which axis and buttons the hardware maps to in the operating system. Take note of these as you will need to refer to the presses and movements by these values in Unity. If you want to set up a wireless controller such as the Xbox One, check out the instructions at this link. If you want to use these controllers with a Mac, you'll first need to install the drivers and you can find the links here. If you do, however, be warned that they might stop the mouse working on the first reboot. So unplug the devices or disconnect them before you boot in for the first time. The controller buttons and joysticks map to different values in the different operating systems. Here are the mapped values for Windows and Mac for the 360. It's straightforward to find the other mappings by doing a Google search or by simple trial and error. Now for a quick demonstration of how this is set up and works in Unity. First of all, I've created a cube. Nothing special about this cube, it's sitting on a textured plane. These are just the default objects in Unity. The cube itself has a box collider added to it. And I'm also going to add a rigid body, which I'll use in a moment with the physics system. Now, this box has the drive script added on it. This drive script is available on the Unity website. Uh, it's in the scripting reference and I use it all the time. If you've watched my other videos, you'll have seen it there because it's a very simple way of getting the keyboard keys to drive a vehicle around using the arrow keys or the WASD keys. Now you here you can see the code is using the input.get access system. The whole idea behind plugging in a joystick or a controller in this case with Unity is to use the access system that is inside of Unity. When I run this as it is, let's just press play and I can use the arrow keys this cube will just drive around. And it's just being pushed along the forward vector, which is the Z axis, the blue one, and I can turn it with the side arrows. Now, although you can't see me doing so, I can also drive this with the Xbox 360 joystick that's in the top left of the controller because Unity is automatically set up to read that little joystick to move along the um, horizontal and vertical axes, which we are already coding for. Now, if you haven't looked at where the axis system is set up, it's under Edit, Project Settings, and Input. Over in the inspector, you'll see a drop-down list called Axes, and these are the mappings between your devices, the mouse, the keyboard, the controllers, uh, and whatever you've got plugged in, and Unity itself. Now we're using the horizontal and vertical axes here to move the object around. And if I bring up the code at the same time, let's see if I can do this. I'll go back into the input and drag this code up here. You can see that this first line is getting a translation value, which is going to move the object forward and backwards and it's getting it from the vertical axis system which is this first uh, sorry second one just here and the rotation is getting the horizontal axis just here and in the input manager just here now if we go and have a look at the vertical one and what's inside there you'll be able to see the mapping of the keys in this case for vertical which will move our cube forward and backwards it's using the up arrow key and the down arrow key. So here and here for a negative and a positive value along that axis. And also we have an alternative button, which is our S and our W. 
and that's where you can use the WASD keys. And the same thing you'll find if you have a look in horizontal, you can see where the keys are set up. If you wanted to change these keys to anything else on the keyboard, you can just type them in here and replace them. With respect to the mapping of the controllers, on the 360, the upper left little joystick is automatically mapped. There's no particular settings in here that are currently affecting it. So it's just sort of natively, on the Mac at least, uh, moving the cube around without having to make any changes. If, however, you wanted to map one of the other joysticks, such as the one that's on the right at the top of the controller, then you'd need to look up what its axis and key numbers are and put them into this system. So let's, for example, say that we want to map that small joystick that's on the right to move the vertical axis. And I'm going to set the type here to joystick axis. And then we look up the joystick and its um, sidewards movement is mapped to what's called this third axis. So I can set the third axis there. And then when I play this, again, you won't be able to see what I'm doing, but I'm actually moving it from side to side, which is essentially an X axis on the controller, but it's mapped to move the cube forward and backwards. So it would depend on what you want to do with the particular buttons and the joysticks as to which ones you map to what. To demonstrate how you control the buttons, you need to use an input.getButton code to do that. And this is one of the reasons why I put that rigid body on the cube, is so that we can press a button on the controller and make the cube go upwards. So let's go back to our drive script. In this drive script, we're going to use the fire button. Now, by default, the fire one button is a left mouse click. And to make a left mouse click cause that cube to jump up, we need to add this. Now, this code here is getting button fire one and then adding a force of 10 in the Y direction. So lifting that cube up, if we save that, and just go back into Unity and press play. When we hold down the left mouse button, it will add an upward force to the cube. Now, if you want to set it up so that the A button on the controller is used for a movement upwards or a jump in this case, then you have to go back into project settings, input, and to where we set the axes before. This time go to fire one and if you have a look at the button that's currently working on that, it's mouse zero. You want to change that to joystick button 16. In this case, I'm working on a Mac and the A button is 16. Here, if you're on Windows, then you would put in joystick button zero. So it all depends on the mapping for the different operating systems as to which ones you need to use in these axis areas to set it up. As always, thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the creation of more tutorials like this one, please consider subscribing as a Patreon for Holistic 3D and also check out my awesome tutorials that I've got running on Udemy.